Now, continuing our discussion on organogenesis, we'll entitle the next flowchart Organogenesis 2. And here we're going to look at a different route of this process. And that route is through something that we've covered before in this lecture, and it's called cell migration or cell movement. This is a process that can guide and does guide organogenesis in a developing human embryo. Cell migration in the context of organogenesis can be defined as when we have local cellular interactions that occur as a result of or via long distance migration of other cells. Long distance migration. So we have local effects as a result of long distance migration. Let's take a look at two examples of this. Neural crest formation is one type of organogenesis that uses this cell migration technique that we've highlighted. So what is neural crest formation? Here what's going to happen is the following. You're going to have a band of cells that develop along borders. Okay, they develop along borders. So this is key here. Along borders where the neural tube NT is going to be pinched off the ectoderm. So what does this mean? What is the overall sort of consequence of this? There's going to be certain cells that are going to be on this border of the neural tube and are going to pinch off, okay? They're going to pinch off of the ectoderm. And when they pinch off, we're going to see the following. The cells migrate. That's why it's cell migration. But they migrate to different parts of the embryo after pin pinching off different parts of embryo. So when do we see this? Well, when they migrate and move to different parts of the embryo, they actually form a variety of structures. They form or influence a variety of tissue development, form a variety of tissues. And that would be things like nerve tissue will develop as a result of this migration, teeth will develop as a result of neural crest migration, and also the skull bones, all as a result of going from one place to another and causing cellular interactions at that other place. <clears throat> now, in addition to neural crest formation, there's also going to be the topic of somites. Somites can be defined as the following. They are a block of cells in the mesoderm, block of cells in the mesoderm. And as a block of cells within the mesoderm, they are going to be lateral to the notochord. So they're basically on the sides of the notochord. What's the purpose? The role of somites is the following. They are an organizing body structure. Their role is in organizing the body's structure. Organizing body's structure. How so? Through cell migration. By long distance migration to result in local cellular interactions, you're going to get the overall segmented nature of the human body as a result of somite organogenesis influence. So the segmented body structure that humans have are of humans will be a result of somites. Now, you might be wondering, how are we segmented? Well, there are certain internal portions of us that are very much segmented, like our vertebrae. Our vertebrae consist of several segments. We have cervical vertebrae, we have thoracic vertebrae, we have lumbar vertebrae. All of these are a part of our spinal cord that are going to be segmented in a very, very organized manner. How is that? During development, during organogenesis specifically, somites govern that process. In addition, our ribs are repeated units that are very much segmented, and also our muscles, all the way at a cellular level and even a macro level, are small, small segments that coalesce to give you a grouping, a huge grouping of structure that would be considered a muscle. 
Overall, what's the big theme here? These are all just going to be serially repeated structures. Serially repeating structures. And why are they repeating and how do they get this orientation? It's all because of somites utilizing cell migration in the overall scheme of organogenesis. That covers our look at cell migration and its influence on organogenesis. In the next video, um, we're going to be looking at human development. We're going to finally be concluding this very long lecture by talking about the actual process of development of this embryo. Now that we know that it undergoes gastrulation and organogenesis, let's take all of that and look at the trimesters of a human pregnancy and see what happens and how a human baby, an infant, is finally born after all of this.